The Helios 40 is a sought-after and much-coveted lens. It seems to have magic inside, what some people call pixie dust, with all those pixies producing some wonderfully swirly photos in the right conditions. At 85mm and a top speed of f1.5, the lens is a sort of supercharged Helios 44 II, like a 58 f2 lens on steroids. I love the 44 II, but I spent a long time dreaming of owning a Helios 40. It appeared to me, looking at Helios 40 photos on the internet, that it would be a big step up. So what's the Helios 40 really like to use? It's clear it can produce amazing images wide open, but how good is it stopped down? And if you already own a Helios 44 II, or one of the other Helios 44s, will the Helios 40 produce images that look significantly unique to justify the extra cost? Because the Helios 40 is a lot more expensive. Here's my version of the lens. It was made in the late 1950s in the KMZ works near Moscow. It's one of the early versions with a triple zero serial number. Legend suggests these early lenses were either pre-production versions or they were special lenses made for Soviet officials. It's nice to think they might be special versions, but there's no firm evidence I've seen for this. One feature of the glass, it has a bluish violet hue. You can see it here, and it does seem to impact the color of the images a little. The Helios 40 optical design is probably based on the Carl Zeiss Biotar 75 f1.5. It has six elements in four groups and ten aperture blades. Stop down, the blades produce a distinctive shape to the bokagons, as we'll see later. The Helios 40 is an M39 screw mount lens. It's an easy thing to adapt it to M42. You just screw an M39 to M42 ring over the mount and you can adapt the lens to digital cameras. After this early version, the Russians produced an M42 screw mount version in black called the 40-2. These 40-2 lenses can have a sort of light amber yellow tint to their glass. In recent times, Helios have produced a brand new version, also called a 40-2 or a 40-2-N. The new lenses have adapters for various different camera mounts, including M42, and Nikon, Canon, Sony, and Pentax mounts. Helios claims that the new version retains the same swirly characteristics as the early lenses, but with improvements to coatings. It's worth pointing out there's another variant of the Helios 40, called the Helios 40 Cyclop. The Cyclop was designed as a night vision lens. The lens has no aperture blades, and so it's a constant f1.5. It's a way of buying into the Helios 40's wide open style without paying the full cost. In this video, I'll be talking exclusively about the early Helios 40. I've not had the opportunity to try later versions, and if you have, please leave comments below. It'd be interesting to read them. As you can see, the lens is a big beast. It's considerably larger than the Helios 44 series lenses. It's an all metal lens with a lot of glass, and it's heavy. It weighs in at a hefty 1,019 grams with the collar and the metal hood. That's around four times as heavy as a 44.2. Not a lens you'll want to walk around with for a long time. My version of the Helios 40 has a detachable tripod collar. Some of the earliest versions have a fixed tripod collar or clamp. I prefer the detachable collar so I can take it off and it doesn't get in the way of the camera body. I don't use the tripod collar a lot, but if you want the best possible results, Stabilizing this lens is important, especially if you're taking landscape or portrait photos stop down, and it doesn't balance on the camera very well. At 85mm, any significant movement from the camera lens can result in blurred images. When I first tried to fix my conventional tripod head to the collar, I found the size of the Helios screw mount was too large for the head, so I had to buy a small adapter to use the tripod on the collar. Just something to bear in mind. Before describing the rest of the lens, I should mention the hood, because I feel the lens does need a hood. It helps to reduce flares and add some contrast to the images. The issue with the Helios 40 is that it has a 66mm filter size, and there are not a lot of 66mm lens hoods on the market. The workaround is to buy a 66 to 67 adapter ring, and with the adapter you can then screw on a more conventional 67mm hood. So that's another thing to consider alongside the tripod adapter. The Helios 40, like the early Helios 44s, is a preset lens, so you can select the maximum f-stop you want to use on the first ring, and the lens goes from f1.5 to f22, and then you can use the second ring to set the aperture you want. I'm a big fan of preset lenses, because I like using a clickless aperture ring, although I accept that some photographers prefer to use a ring that clicks, so they know where they are when they set the aperture. The focus ring is not in a great position. 
You might struggle to find it sometimes when you're looking through the camera's viewfinder, and it can be quite stiff to turn. Sometimes when I turn the focus ring, I start to unscrew the whole lens as well from its mount. With this and the weight, it's not the most comfortable lens to use, but it's definitely a statement lens. So let's look at the images, starting with the lens wide open at f1.5. I suspect most people will be buying this bokeh monster to use it wide open. And wide open, the lens is extraordinary. It's a monster at subject isolation. It just zaps busy backgrounds, where quite ugly and distracting backgrounds are smoothed over with beautiful blur. And for its most well-known trick, the lens is capable of very swirly bokeh. Here are some examples of its swirly bokeh. There are plenty more from photographers on the web, including some gorgeous portraits. It's important to say that the lens won't produce swirly bokeh simply on demand in all cases. You'll need to try harder than that to get the swirls, and they'll only occur in the right scenes and the right lighting conditions. If you look at all the swirly images online, you'll notice that many of them have been taken in woods or forests, or alternatively, in urban scenes at night with some form of bright lighting in the background. These are the kind of backgrounds that work best for swirls. One thing I learned quickly about the lens is that you need to focus on an object that is further away than you'd be doing with the Helios 44-2. With the Helios 44-2, you can get close up to flowers or other objects, and if there's a suitable background, then you'll get those swirls. The Helios 40 will focus to around a meter, but I found that objects in focus need to be further away than that, over three meters or so, to get maximum background swirls. This changes the kind of compositions you can do, and I actually prefer the close-up ability of the 44-2. But having said that, the Helios 40 is perfect for head and shoulders portraits, and portraits of people a little further away. In terms of image quality of the photo straight out of the camera, it can be a bit of a mixed bag. The images, to my eyes, are not as center sharp as the Helios 44-2. The Helios 44-2 lens really is a star wide open in terms of center sharpness. But then it's an f2 lens and not an f1.5 lens, so you'd expect the Helios 40 to have some more softness wide open. And on the plus side, with the faster speed at 85mm, you can definitely get smoother and dreamier bokeh and better subject isolation, which can help with that 3D look, especially with portraits. Now I'm not a portrait photographer, but you can see some of the 3D effects in the photos I'm highlighting in this video. With the Helios 40, you sometimes have to do quite a lot of post-processing to bring out the colours and contrasts. This is just a fact of life with these old lenses. It's a similar situation with the Helios 44 too. In bright light, straight out of camera, the images can appear rather washed out and prone to light flares. Not the interesting kind of UFO light flares you get when you point a lens near the sun, but areas where it looks like you've overexposed the shot. The early lenses have limited coatings, and this can be a bonus because it means the lenses produce soft, dreamy bokeh images. But in other situations where you want more contrast to your images, the coatings are not as effective as later lenses. And the bluish-violet hue on the glass does seem to impact the colours this particular lens produces. I think you can see the impact on the snap of this church. In moderate, cloudier conditions, the lens also struggles with a lack of contrast. But again, I should stress that this is something that a lot of old lenses struggle with. The good news is that the images can take a lot of pushing and pulling before they start to fall apart and show banding, for example. The dials I use the most are the detail extractor and color contrast dials, and this helps to bring out the swirls if they're there in the background. So I feel this really is a special wide open bokeh lens, at least it is after processing. The images are beautiful and artistic, and the bokeh is very painterly, but how good is it stopped down? With the Helios 40, I tend to get a rather low number of keepers stopped down. And when I use the lens handheld, there seem to be more blurred, out-of-focus photos. But that's also true of other manual focus longer lenses. Stop down. I must say I'm not a fan of the Helios 40's bokegons. They're quite intrusive. On this photo, I've stressed the bokegons so they really stand out. And they look like wood saws. They're definitely an acquired taste and in my view, they're to be avoided, if at all possible. Given the potential lack of sharpness issues with handheld shots, I'd like to share some photos taken with the lens on a tripod to see how good it can be stopped down. And here are a few uncropped photos to look at. Let's start with an infinity shot looking down a railway track. Wide open, it's just too soft, so it's the kind of view that really needs stopping down. At f16, which this picture is, 
The details are okay, the outer edges of the image are much sharper, but the bridge in the distance still isn't very well defined, not as good as it looked through the viewfinder. To double check this stop down sharpness, I took a photo of this ice cream van at f11, which should be around the optimal f stop for sharpness. Now I know for a fact that the prices on the van windows were in razor sharp focus when viewed through the viewfinder, but when you zoom in on the photo taken by the lens, you can make out the prices, but they're not razor sharp. Now remember this was taken on a tripod. I think you could legitimately expect your standard modern digital zoom would do a better job at 85mm. But rather than harping on about the lens weaknesses, the final comparison shot should highlight that famous swirl, because you're not really going to be buying this lens as a landscape lens. These photos have had a little processing, but no sharpening. I rested the camera on a rail by some steps and snapped this scene at f16. has a nice colour stop down and lots of details. It doesn't matter if the details aren't razor sharp, they're sharp enough for this composition. And now let's see the same scene wide open, and the lens applies its magic with these swirls. The swirls are created, by the way, by the optical distortion of the bokeh balls. The bokeh balls are round at the centre, here, and then the circles turn into ovals as you move away from the centre, caused by the lens's optical distortion. A lot of lenses do this kind of distortion, but critically, the Helios optics also swivel the ovals around the outer curve of the glass, so in the final image it all looks like a swirl. Some lens designers call this an imperfection, not magic, and indeed the Helios designers worked hard to reduce the swirls of the Helios 44 series, to the point where the swirls had all but gone from the Helios 44 M4 onwards. So is the Helios 40 a one-trick pony? Well, few lenses can swirl like the Helios 40, except the early 44 and 44 of course. And for this reason alone, if you're looking for an 85mm lens with unique rendering, the Helios 40 is a great choice. And it won't always swirl, so I don't think it is a one-trick pony. It can also do excellent 3D images with super smooth backgrounds. However, as we've seen, stop-down is not that great. There are better old lenses out there at or around 85mm, the Takumas, for example, or even a modern zoom at 85mm. And if you want a less costly M42 Russian 85mm, it might be worth looking at the Jupiter 9, although you won't get the swirly bokeh with that lens. Back to the stop-down Helios 44 images for a moment. Personally, while the colour images are okay, I often convert stop-down images into black and white photos. Generally, I think they look more stylish and classy, and it can turn okay images into potentially great images with more eye-catching contrasts. So this brings us to the final question. Is it really worth buying a Helios 40 if you already own a Helios 44 series lens? The answer partly depends on the version of the Helios 44 you have. The later versions, from the 44M onwards, don't swirl as much as the early versions. So if you own a later version and you're after swirls, then you could consider a Helios 40. If you have an earlier version, then it's a more difficult decision. I personally think that if you're looking mainly for a wide open swirly bokeh lens, then I'd go for an early 58mm Helios, including the 44, the 44.2 or the 44.3, the 44.2 being the best value probably, much much cheaper than the 40, and it's not a big heavy beast to carry around as a walk around lens. With the 44.2 you can get closer to your subjects, and it'll be sharper at f2 in the centre than the Helios is at f1.5 and you'll still get good subject isolation at f2. You'll also get plenty of wonderful swirly bokeh, and I think you'll find it easy to get those great swirls with the 44s. It's just that when you get great swirls with the 40, you get them on a grander scale. On the other hand, if you want a portrait lens with a unique look, a look that friends or clients will say, wow, then the Helios 40 is the one to get. It has some great strengths. You just need to be aware of its limitations. And you should also do your research into the pros and cons of buying the Helios 40 versus the old or new Helios 40-2. The fact is, the Helios 40 is a hard lens to master, harder to use than the 44-2. And that's part of the fun of owning this unique lens. It's a real challenge, not like modern, well-balanced digital lenses. It can be frustrating and infuriating, it won't produce swirls on demand, but with a little luck and some effort, the images can be amazing, definitely with that magic included. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. 
If you've not subscribed, please do, and I'll be posting some more videos. And any comments below, including things you don't agree with, because it's only my opinion on this lens, they'd be most welcome.